All right. Hey, it looks like we've got some attendees on here. Uh, my name's First Lieutenant Vandershans. I just wanted to see, can, or can you guys all hear me okay? We can hear you. Okay. All right, we'll give it maybe a couple more minutes. Okay, Cindy, should I just go ahead and uh, get started or did you want to say anything before I started? You can go ahead with your bio and your presentation. Okay, hi everyone who's joined us. Um, I'm not sure where you're all joining us from, uh, but I'm from, I'm in San Diego right now, so it's beautiful and sunny here. I know it's not like that everywhere, but I'm First Lieutenant Mallory Vandershans. I am an active duty Marine officer. I currently work at the 12th Marine Corps District. I have actually been in for just over um, 15 years now. I enlisted into the Marine Corps uh, when I was 19, so a year out of high school uh, in outside Oklahoma City. And uh, in 2006, I've done three combat tours to, to Iraq as a combat engineer. I changed my job, actually. I was a photographer for several years. 
and I did a year in Afghanistan taking photos. I have majority of my career I've been stationed out east coast, uh, Camp Lejeune, uh, North Carolina. I've worked at the Pentagon. I've worked at Marine Barracks 8th and I in Washington, D.C. And I'm currently commissioned as a Comstrat officer, a communication strategy and operations officer with 12th Marine Corps District. And I hold the billet of the assistant marketing and communication officer here. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know kind of like why I'm here and tell you a little bit about myself and why all of you being educators uh, for our young generation and why you guys are so important and why you guys are actually really important to me. Um, I just wanted to tell you guys a reason why I actually joined the military is all throughout high school, I was the I was a type of student who had really good grades. However, I did not know what I wanted to do. I played sports. Uh, I was in some advanced courses, but still I was kind of all over the place. And really what, what, what drove me, like what I wanted to do. I had two teachers in high school and wait, let me back up actually, because this is important. Right before I started high school, my family, my dad got a new job and we actually moved from California to Oklahoma. And this was a huge culture shock. And it left me with like out any friends. I didn't have any family in the area other than my brothers. Um, and that didn't help me as far as like what I wanted to do further. Um, and it was when I got to Oklahoma, I really confided in, you know, two teachers. And one was actually a, he was a Marine. He was a veteran Marine. He served for eight years. And he would tell me all about his time in the Marine Corps. And, you know, when I was, this was a, when I was a sophomore in high school at the time, I didn't really think anything of it. Um, I didn't really know much about the military. And then fast forward my senior year, my uncle Ron, who was living in California, he joined the Marine Corps. And my uncle Ron was somebody I looked up to for everything. He taught me so much. Um, I'm really into art and photography. And he was the one who taught me how to um, develop film, take photos, um, and strive, you know, to take my artistic ability, artistic abilities into something greater. And I just, that was my first, you know, introduction into the Marines and the military in general. Um, and my teacher, the one who was a Marine veteran, he didn't necessarily tell me to join the service or the Marine Corps, but he did provide me like a better understanding of what it was because I didn't know anything about the about the military, the Marines um, and all the opportunities that he was given and how the Marine Corps actually provided him um, a better life. As soon as he, you know, he served his country, uh, he went on to college and then he became an educator. And I thought that was that was remarkable. Like he didn't necessarily have a plan. Like at the moment I didn't have a plan. Um, and the Marine Corps kind of guided him into, into a better path. And he was doing exactly what he loved to do. Um, and he told me that the way that he taught us in class, a lot of those leadership skills and those educational skills that he that he used in us in the classroom, he actually learned in the Marine Corps. And I thought that was great. Um, so the reason I waited a year after high school to join the Marine Corps though, is because I was still really unsure what I wanted to do. And I was kind of all over the place. And I ended up losing my uncle in a motorcycle accident. And I knew in that moment that I wanted to be a Marine just like my uncle. And that's what pushed me back into a recruiting office. And I was honestly gone to boot camp like five days later. 
Um, and it was great. And obviously, like I said, I've been in the Marine Corps now for 15 years. I even was did a commissioning education program where I got to stay on active duty service, um, attend a college of my choice, uh, get a degree of my choice. And then when I graduated from college, I commissioned as an officer in the Marine Corps. And I'm now continuously doing everything I love to do. And I'd have to say I probably wouldn't be here and as happy as I am and as you know as successful as I've been already if it weren't for my uncle Ron of course but also you know those teachers in high school and especially my one teacher who told me so much about the Marine Corps and the military service and gave me this like different insight into what the service could actually provide me as a high school student and as a very young adult who was kind of unsure what they wanted to do. Um, I bring that up because you guys are, well, you guys are all educators, whether you're, you know, teachers, coaches, counts, counselors, like you, you are that, um, that direct impact on, on our future of our society, like these young adults. And you may have students who are just like me, you know, succeeding, doing very well in advanced courses. You know, maybe they're playing sports, they're in community involvement, they're they're great, great young, you know, girls and boys, but maybe they just don't know what they want to do. Um, and I'm just here to to not only just share my experience about how the Marine Corps has changed me for the better. And I, I'm so glad I was, I've had the opportunity to be a Marine um, and lead Marines. Um, and that's just something I'm hoping today, maybe through questions with you guys, I don't know how familiar you guys are with the military or the, or the Marine Corps in general, but uh, there are several ways that even the Marines in your area could help you um, better talk about the Marine Corps to your students. Um, I don't know how involved you guys are or as far as like students coming to you about like their future plans or even if you've ever told them about the military. Um, but I'm hoping today, if you haven't considered or mentioned the Marine Corps or the military to your students. Um, I'm hoping today you'll leave with something that you next time you have a student ask you about, you know, a career path and they're undecided that maybe you can mention, you know, a pathway in in the military or possibly the Marine Corps. Because, um, you know, like just like you guys, you guys are wanting the best for your students your guide you guys are guiding them right before you know their adult life is beginning um, and that's very impactful you guys are impacting them significantly um, and so i know you guys want to give them as much advice as possible and open their eyes to all these different opportunities that are going to be right there you know within the next five years um, and I'm hoping that the the Marine Corps is one of those discussions that that you're having with them as a as a possible opportunity for them to, you know, go to college, have a great career. And there's a lot of careers available in the military and they can still do what they love to do and, you know, for, do further education and lead Marines if they wanted to be an officer like me. Um, it's it's a very rewarding occupation, um, and I will say that I am definitely going to retire as a Marine um, if I could stay in for like 50 years. Number one, my body probably couldn't handle it, but if I could seriously stay in for 50 years, I, I would. I absolutely love it. I have nothing but great things to say about the military. Um, so I'm just hoping you guys can tell your students uh, about the military and specifically about the Marine Corps. Um, but with that, uh, I do a lot better like engaging with everybody. Like right now, I'm looking at myself kind of and I can see your names, but I can't see your faces. 
Um, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, I'd love to answer any questions you might have. Um, but if you, if you know, if we don't have anything, if you guys don't have anything, I do want you guys to try and go to connect.marines.com if you haven't had a chance. Um, but with that, I will open it up for questions if anybody has any. I'll ask you a question. Um, what would it be like for a, an educator to have an interaction with a recruiter maybe at their high school? So um, I don't know if any of the educators here have actually had that interaction yet. Um, I know like with the pandemic last year, like all the campuses were for the most part, they were closed. So they didn't get that interaction. But our Marine recruiters, they want to come on campus. They want to interact with you. They want to make sure you guys and, and the students are there and you know that they can see and hear about all the opportunities within the military and the Marine Corps. But it's actually, it goes so much further than that. Um, our Marine recruiters, they get on campus and they grow fr like, friendships with you know the the faculty and the students they're there they're there to not just like recruit and find you know our you know our our future servicemen and women but they're also there to to help lead mentor and guide because a lot of these recruiters they're like they're sergeants staff sergeants so you're looking at like maybe early to mid uh, late 20s, like they, they were in high school, not too, some of them, you know, not too much longer than these kids are. Um, and they can really mentor and guide them, uh, especially when our recruiters go back into their hometowns. And some of them even work and go back to recruit on the campuses that they actually went to school. Um, so it's, it's a, it's honestly like a it's a two way street. So the recruiters are are getting in there to be engaged and participate with community members, um, and they're also able to recruit. But also the faculty, you know, some you get to learn about the Marine Corps if you didn't know, or is, I'm sure there's faculty members on staff that maybe were in the Marine Corps, the Army, or the Air Force, and you know they see a familiar a familiar uniform, a familiar face. Um, and then, you know, sometimes the recruiters, you know, on campus in uniform, uh, the students maybe feel like a little bit safer um, or they get to see they get to see and hear about something they maybe never had their entire life. Do I have any other questions? It looks like we have a question in the Q&A box if you want to answer okay. that. Yeah, so let's see. Can I get to the Q&A? There we go. All right. Okay, so we had one come in. Um, hi, question for those looking into fields of engineering, what areas of engineering can be found in the military? <clears throat> and how are they in respective to growth for the individual? So uh, as far as engineering goes, we have, um, uh, military occupational specialty called uh, combat engineers. Uh, with within combat engineers, uh, we they learn anywhere from uh, mines, 
explosives, um, basic wood frame construction, uh, force protection measures. Uh, we even have heavy equipment operators within uh, within there. So they honestly, combat engineers, they learn a, a vast amount of information in the engineering field. Um, and they learn all of it. There's not even just like a specific job within the engineering company that you're kind of focused on. You learn everything. And even when you deploy, you know this entire skill set. And there's also advanced schools that I know, um, you know, Marines can even like whenever they pick up rank, there's advanced schools in the engineer field called like journeyman school where they're learning breaching techniques and more explosive techniques. And uh, there's a lot of technical aspects in the engineer field. Um, I wasn't in it for very long, but I will tell you, I, I'm using a lot of what I learned um, in the engineer field. Like uh, I can I could do any basic wood frame construction. Like I could probably go get a construction job if I wanted just from the short time I was as an engineer because the schooling is so vast and so detailed and so expansive um, that there's plenty of growth to stay also in in the engineer field, in the military, uh, or even if they, if someone decides to enlist or become an engineer officer in the Marine Corps, that all the skill sets that they're going to learn there and all the technical proficiency that they're going to get uh, will transfer actually over to the civilian sector extremely well because they're learning a lot of the same techniques, especially on the construction side of engineering. Um, that any engineer in another school is is getting as well. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. All right, let's go to another one. So uh, Eve, you said, what advice do you have for a young female teen that is interested in the Marines or military service in general, but is afraid of being sexually harassed? Well, Eve, I'm just going to speak from my own personal experience. Um, I have never had an issue with this. Um, I even being so like I said, I was a combat engineer when I first enlisted in 2006 and I did two tours in Iraq. And at that time, uh, combat engineers, uh, it was very a male dominated military occupational specialty field. Um, and I, my first deployment, I was the only female in my platoon. Um, and I will tell you, I, they, it was like having a group of brothers, you know, or, you know, some of the older ones, they were like my, you know, like my uncle or whatever. Um, I, I've had nothing but amazing experiences, even in a fully male dominated field where I was the only female around. Um, I will say, you know, like, I feel like it made me probably a little bit like tougher um, because being the only girl in this male dominated, you know, field and then deploying, you know, like I did, maybe it's more of my personality or character but I always felt like I, I needed to be the best at everything and I wanted to like you know show these guys up like I can do everything that they can but I could do it better um, and I honestly think they and they enjoyed it uh, and they honestly all the guys I've ever worked with have made me I feel like made me a better marine made me a better person um, all around um, and I've never ever had a, a bad experience or a sexual harassment or anything involved in that. Um, that's that's coming from me. And um, yeah, I don't know if you have anything else on that or want more, want more advice, um, I'm happy to give it. What do you, so sorry, Brian Mendez, what do you love most about being a Marine? Uh, the travel. <laughs> um, my career has been <clears throat> had been a little bit different than the majority of Marines, but because I was a combat engineer and at the time we were, uh, you know, full force in Iraq, I deployed a lot. 
Um, and then when I got back and I actually switched my role over to photography, um, I once I was a photographer, that opened up a lot of other incredible opportunities. Uh, and that one of those being was traveling all over the world and taking photos. I deployed to Afghanistan as soon as I changed my job into photography. And all I did for an entire year in Afghanistan was travel with the uh, two-star general there all around the area of operations in Afghanistan. And I just took photos doing the historical documentation of all the Marines and other services out there. And like the community involvement we had with the Afghan nationals, um, and from there, I was picked up by the Commandant of the Marine Corps to be his official photographer. And with that came, I can't even tell you how many countries I've been to and how many photos that I've taken all over the world. So the best part about being a Marine for me has just been all those travel experiences and being able to see all these different societies, all these different areas of the world. Um, and I will say that there are, are a lot of jobs in the Marine Corps that give you the ability to travel as much as I did. Uh, currently, I'm tra I travel a lot again because as, the, as a marketing officer in Marine Corps recruiting, I have a district, and within that district, we're covering the entire Western Hemisphere of the United States, which includes, you know, Alaska and Hawaii. And it's my job to ensure, like, our recruiters and, you know, the staff at those recruiting stations have what they need as far as communi uh, communication products and marketing uh, products, advertising products. And so I get to travel to all those places to make sure, you know, all those stations, those recruiting stations and those Marines have what they need uh, to be successful. So I every job I've had, I've I've gone somewhere or I've been traveling this entire time. I think I am on the road. I think I've been on the road more so in the Marine Corps than I've actually been like home based, which has been amazing. And that includes because of all the training exercises I do before things I'm again traveling. Um, so that's probably my favorite part of it. Uh, let's make sure I don't want to miss anyone. Eve, you said, how hard is it to join the Marines enlisted and then move to officer? Well, it's it's not hard. It's, um, there, it is challenging though. It is competitive. So this is, uh, available to, to all enlisted Marines to do this. Um, you'd be surprised how many, how many don't want to do it or how many that do maybe aren't qualified. Um, I, will say that I actually had to submit to uh, do the commissioning education program twice. There's a lot that goes into it. And the Marine Corps wanted to see that I was, I was serious about being a Marine officer and wanting to lead Marines. Um, and you, they already want you to have like, for example, they want you to already have like a, a like college credits. So if you were to the specific program that I, I went into, uh, so you could be a transfer student into a university and it, they want to see your GPA and they want to see how well you've done with with college credits. Um, and then I also at the time I had to remove tattoos, you know, because we have a we have a strict tattoo policy, uh, which is actually kind of changing in the moment. Um, but so I had to do a lot of things is to show how serious I was and I actually had to work towards it. But I wouldn't say it was hard. Um, if you have that desire, if you're an enlisted Marine and you know that, hey, the Marine Corps could give you an opportunity to do your four year time at a university, earn your degree and commission as an officer. Like if you want to do that, you can. It is available to you. You just have to want it and you have to work towards it. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's hard. It's just it's just applying yourself.
Okay, so Eve, you have another one. Uh, do the Marines have a guard component like the Army National Guard Reserves uh, for once a week duty? So uh, we don't have the, the Army National Guard. The Marines have Marine Reserves and that's two weeks a year. Um, and it's it's similar, but it's it's reserved. So reserve Marines are able to be at their in their, you know, their home of their choice, doing the job or going to school and then having these, you know, two weeks a year um, capability or like designated places of duty. Um, and while they're activated or while they're there, they're they're getting the benefits, they're getting paid um, there. I don't know like full like differences between the army national guard and the marine reserves uh but there are some differences there but if if you do have a student that is interested in something you know if they mention the army national guard you can say the marine corps reserves and that is on the marine website uh, about marine reserves and it goes through all the requirements all the opportunities available within the reserves and when you are in the reserves, all of the benefits that you're getting whenever you're working uh, during that time. Okay, Eve, awesome. <laughs> what is the hardest MOS to get in the Marines? Hardest to be selected for? <laughs> Well, um, so hardest MOS to get, I'm not sure like if I can really say the hardest MOS, uh, but I will say like the recruiter uh, will work with your student um, if they're interested in being a Marine and you know, there's so many MOSs available, what the student's gonna do is they're gonna, you know, they're gonna take the ASVAB, they're gonna see what they qualify for. Um, and from there, it's, you know, making sure that job is available at that time that applicant is, is going to ship off to boot camp. Um, but there are tons of MOSs to choose from. You, there's just different qualifications uh, as far as, you know, the, the ASVAB and how, how it's scored. And then every MOS has a parameter that you must meet, like, it, within that to have that job. Um, does that answer that question? I, think I saw you put another one in here. What are any of the minimum ASVAB scores needed to get into the Marines? Is it higher or lower than the other service branches? Um, I believe the, I'm not sure on the minimum requirements, but I want to say it's about 35 on the ASVAB. Um, and is it higher and lower than other service branches? I think all the service branches are kind of very, very on the same page as far as minimum scores for the ASVAB. And then if I can jump in here real quick and ask a question, um, what would you say the hardest thing about going into the Marines at a young age was? So for me personally, because I enlisted in 2006, we were, we were in the heart of Afghanistan. Uh, so for me, the, the most challenging thing that came to my mind when I was joining the service was I knew I was going to deploy. But that was something that I that I personally and honestly wanted to, to do. I wanted to I wanted to do something greater than myself, right? I wanted to be out there and I wanted to I wanted to protect our country, but also help the Iraqi nationals live have a better chance of life and community and structure. Um, so the the scariest and hardest decision was for me was to think about that. I was only 19 years old and to have thoughts like that, that's very maturing, right? That, that, that made me, that made me grow up really fast. And when I had spent my entire time in high school, not knowing what I wanted to do that moment, when I was talking to a recruiter, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. It was, it was serving my country and, and, and deploying, even though it was scary and challenging making that decision. I, 
in that moment knew exactly what I wanted to do. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so Eve, you've got another one. What about news stories? We hear about hazing and boot camp. Are there really any safety standards or just need to be willing to 100% boot camp? Oh, so Eve, there's actually, there is no hazing there and everything is safety and accountability and all of those things in boot camp. Being someone who gone through boot camp and also I had to go through officer candidate school. They're all about safety guidelines and making sure that every every uh, future Marine that is going through that training is going to make it through that training the healthiest and the best way possible. Uh, boot camp is there to, to make sure this future Marine is ready to be a Marine. Uh, they are there to, yes, it's physically and mentally challenging. Um, I will say that, but all those physical and mental challenges, they're all planned. They're part of a, you know, a curriculum, you could say, of, of transforming our young, you know, boys and girls into mature adult Marines, right? So, but everything, safety is number one. Like we have this saying, you know, like safety is paramount and we do everything. Like, and we even say like, even on the officer, like um, everyone is a safety officer. And that's because like, we take safety very seriously because our job already is a dangerous job. So we're here to make sure that we train everyone to the best the best of their capabilities and we keep everyone safe because on the back, on the front end, like we're the nation's 911 force. We're, we have to be ready when our nation is least ready. And so we're not trying to put anyone in harm's way during training evolutions. We are making sure everyone is prepared for when that call could come and we are going overseas to protect our country. Eve, did I miss the response about the counselor program we used to have for counselors? Do you still offer it? How can I apply? So Eve, I don't know if I'm familiar about um, the counselor program. I don't know if um, anyone else on, like maybe Justin or Captain Bigger, if they know what Eve might be mentioning as far as the counselor program. I do, Eve, I do know that we offer, um, we offer like educator workshops. Um, they, you know, they happen throughout uh, usually like January, September timeframe, either at Paris Island or the Recruit Depot here in San Diego, uh, where they bring in like counselors and high school teachers and, you know, even high school coaches, the principals, and uh, we, we bring them in for a week workshop on the recruit depots and we kind of give them a day in the life or really a week in the life of, of our Marine Corps training or recruit training. Um, and I, maybe that might be what you're, what you're talking about, uh, but that you can find that on the Marine website. If you are interested in doing an educator workshop, you are more than happy to do that. Uh, you can fill out an application on uh, the Marine Corps recruiting page under workshops, and there's an application on there. It's all online, really easy to fill out. And uh, wherever you're from, uh, somebody, a recruiter or a, a another Marine will get your application and they will reach out to you and let you know like a potential date of when you could possibly come to the Recruit Depot with other educators and counselors such as yourself to get this you know, full immersive Marine Corps experience. It's actually really great. Okay, so Eve, uh, oldest son surprised, put down his college deposit. Okay, hold on. Have a minute, a few changes ahead. I thought he was talking about weekend plans. He said, well, mom, I enlisted into the Marines. I am smart, but I am lazy. I need the Marines. Wow, big changes for our family. He came back changed. 
oh my gosh, Eve, that's that. Yes. I can imagine that being nerve wracking. I kind of did the same thing to my parents. Uh, I, I remember, like I said in my story, like I walked into the, the recruiting office cause I was already 18. I had already finished high school and I was like, Hey, I'm, let me get out of here. You know, I'm, I want to go to boot camp. I want to go to Iraq, you know? And you know, the recruiter was great. The recruiter was like, Oh, I'm not going to let you do this. I have to at least talk to your parents first, even though you're 18. Like I want to make sure I meet your parents first, but I'm glad he did that. But my parents had that shock, but it, I wasn't the one who had to tell them. It was actually the recruiter. So it kind of took that away from me, which is great. But congratulations on that. Uh, did he, so uh, did he already go to boot camp? I, I think I missed that part. Maybe to go off of that, um, what advice would you have for, you know, 18 year olds that are enlisting, um, you know, that are going to be making that huge change? What's the best advice you can offer um, that maybe these educators can also uh, give the advice to their students? Sorry, Cindy, as far as like going, you know, enlisting or just going on into like school and the civilian sector? So enlisting, um, maybe the process, just advice throughout that process. Yeah. So actually, so when I joined, we were at, in the time, like we were, we were significantly growing all of our services. So I was able to walk in and I was at, at boot camp like a week later, less than that. But today it's a lot different uh, because we're not in Iraq and we're not in Afghanistan. So now if, if a student decides that they're going to enlist, they're going to see a recruiter and they're going to go through the same application process and take, making sure the ASVAB scores, finding it, finding a job specialty, but they're probably going to be part of what's called a delayed entry program. So within that time frame, which could be anywhere from a month to six months before, uh, you know, these, these young men and women are going to actually ship to recruit training. So within that time frame, they actually fall under recruiting substations, delayed entry program, and they're doing anything from like physical training to, you know, to keep them prepared for recruit training. And also they're going to teach them, you know, knowledge like Marine Corps knowledge, military basic knowledge, because boot camp is not just physical, it's also educational. Uh, and so what? during that time before they go, they're going to get a lot of this education and this, you know, this physical training to prepare them. And that is the biggest advice that I would give, you know, you know, an 18 year old, if they're waiting to ship to boot camp, or maybe they're in an officer program, and they're going to go to officer candidate school, is just to maintain your studies, your military and your Marine Corps knowledge, and to stay active, stay active, engage, and like diet really well uh, because the training is not easy. All right, two more questions. Okay, so Eve, you said you went to Paris Island. All right. Yep, to infantry school. Oh, okay, great. Infantry school in 29 Palms. Uh, Eve, that's all so great to hear. Wow, in grad school, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Seems like he's doing really well. So you have another one here, Eve, that's great. How will the Marines handle the changing state laws around marijuana use and drug screening, pre-enlisting, et cetera? history of recreational drug use. So I am, um, I am not the person who's doing screenings as far as like, you know, pre recreational use. Um, I do know, though, that, you know, this is something that's really around our, in our society more heavily now with, you know, the states, um, you know, legalizing marijuana use. Uh, but I will say there's, you know, they're still under 18 years old, majority of them before they enlist. So they shouldn't be doing recreational marijuana use. Um, and I will say that even though it is regulated and, you know, or the laws, you have state laws, the military falls under federal law. 
Um, and so we still operate under the, you know, our, our laws and those laws. So, um, but I, that's as, that's as much as I can personally tell you, cause I'm not, I'm not personally involved with that screening process. <laughs> How has the Marines taught you to command a room? Please give examples. So from the very beginning of my, you know, you can call it a career, right? So as soon as I, on the enlisted side, once I was a non-commissioned officer, so I got the rank of corporal and then onto sergeant, I already had Marines that I was leading. Uh, and with that comes making sure that their well-being is taken care of, but also giving them classes and training. But also, you know, you you are now a non-commissioned officer. You are a young leader of Marines. You are supposed to be willing and ready to, you know, stand up and probably give some type of period of instruction or a class um, or some type of training. Um, so that's one way that I've started really young as far as having to, you know, be in front of, you know, other Marines or give a presentation. Um, and I know I mentioned earlier, like I was the only female in my first engineer platoon. So, you know, sometimes they're like, oh, you know, like little Corporal Vandershams, let's, she's an NCO now, you know, let's put her in front of there. Let's have her give the class. So, you know, I've been thrown into some situations, but I was prepared. I was given enough time to prepare as well. Um, I, I'll be honest, I, you know, there's been times where I've, had to give speeches or presentations uh, where I've been nervous. Um, a very recent example, I was asked to go to the University of Oregon to help one of our officer selection officers out there do a women in leadership panel. He reached out to me because obviously he was a male, but they really wanted to incorporate women in leadership. Uh, so he had me come out to do the panel. And I, I'll say, like, even after all this time and after all these presentations and after all these classes that I have given, that I was still nervous. But I think that's OK because, you know, I want to perform well. Um, but the Marine Corps taught me, like, I guess the confidence, like you're going to get through this. Look at everything else you've been through. You are prepared. You, it, the panel is women in leadership. You are a leader of Marines. So just be yourself, have the confidence that the Marine Corps has helped instill in you and go up there and tell your story and answer questions. Um, I will say that having three combat tours and the vast experience and different, you know, job skills, and then working directly for one of our joint chiefs, um, that naturally taught me different ways to, um, to interact with people, even no matter the size group, whether it's just face to face with one person, or if it is commanding an entire room. Uh, so if, if that's enough examples, I think, <laughs> hopefully I answered your question. Thank you, Angela. All right, any more Q and A? Let me check. All right, thank you, Eve, um, and thank you, everybody. Um, like I said, I don't know like how much interaction that you've actually had uh, with with the local Marines in your area, whether they've you know been on campus. I know a lot of places are just they just opened up this past semester. Some are still doing the half virtual, half in person. Uh, but I will say that they're other than just them, you know, coming on campus and saying hi and you know, recruiting and telling about Marine Corps opportunities. So our recruiters are doing a lot of different things. I don't know if we have any coaches on right now, uh, but we've had Marines actually go out and do some of like our physical testing that we are required to do in the Marine Corps. They've actually brought it to like a football team or a wrestling team for those, you know, those students to try it. 
Um, Marines have gone and volunteered at high school events just to help with like community. Um, they've done like tutor sessions. They've, they do so much more than just than recruiting. They want to, they want to show how the Marine Corps has, you know, has made a significant positive impact on their life. And they want to share that with your students. Um, and they want to share that with you too. Um, but with that, I no more. I do have another doing... question. Okay. We could, yeah. We could, yeah. We could hit. Um, I know that with the pandemic, especially in high school, it has been, you know, crazy for the past year and a half, um, almost two years. So how has the Marines adjusted uh, through the pandemic? Yeah, so our biggest thing is we love to talk to people. We like to tell people why the why the Marine Corps has changed our life and the opportunities that's available and the benefits and everything. Well, that was really hard because Marines, we like that face-to-face -face interaction. We want to be on campus. We want to talk to you guys. And because of the pandemic, when the schools were shut down, just like all of you guys, you guys had to rely on, you know, that virtual communication. We didn't stop sharing, you know, our Marine Corps experience and our, our messaging and like opportunities and benefits within the service. We just did it a different way. Just like you guys, you know, you were still teaching your classes or you still coaching, you know, your students, but it, a lot of it during the pandemic was through virtual means. So just like you guys are probably still learning how to teach, you know, virtually possibly, we were we were learning and are still learning different ways to stay connected with you all um, and stay connected with your students because we want to be. I think that was the big the most challenging thing over the pandemic and we still see it in some of our areas today. Yeah, and with that, um, obviously the pandemic was not something that we had all planned. Um, so, what advice do you have for keeping students motivated when things? aren't going as they were originally planned. Yeah, so I'm actually, a, I like to read uh, philosophical books. My, the one that I'm reading now is The Daily Stoic. Um, and honestly, just mentally uh, preparing myself uh, allows me to mentally prepare those around me. And when I mean like those around me are, are my young Marines, you know, they, they see me every single day and they, they are watching me and, you know, whether, whether they're looking at me like being inspired or I'm teaching them something or whatever the case is, I always want to be, you know, the most positive and best version of myself. So I am always pushing out like positivity and optimism and hopefulness. And I, I'm no matter that there's a pandemic going on, I'm still doing all the things that I did before as far as like, you know, good diet, good workout plan, good, you know, I'm doing different educational opportunities, working in the community, but I come to work still with that with that determination, with that ambition, with that smile on my face, because life is, life is good. We are all going to get through this. And I maintain that with them as well. So just like, you know, we all have hard days, you know, as leaders, you're a leader in the classrooms, right? Or on those football fields, everything like your positivity everything you're radiating, they're going to soak in because they're looking to you, whether you, they've told you, or whether you know it or not, they're looking to you for like that leadership, that guidance. And if, if you remain positive and optimistic of our future, then they will too. And then that alone will, you know, keep them healthy mentally and physically. And then also they'll want to continue to strive and remain ambitious and remain excited for what's ahead, you know, uh, whether that be college or straight into a career of their choice. Uh, if they see, see you continuously motivated and happy and optimistic, they'll, I feel like the majority of them will be the same. Awesome. Thank you. Um, let's do a closing question here. Um, 
We kind mm -hmm. of mentioned the Marine Influencer Program. Um, I want to leave educators, coaches, athletic directors, counselors, anyone that's on here with us today um, with some resources. So what are some great resources available um, to these influential individuals in the school districts? Yeah, so if you really want to know like a lot about the Marine Corps, especially in your area, every all of your cities are going to have a, a Marine there. There is a local recruiting office, and I promise you, if you just type into Google like Marine Corps, like the closest recruiting office, that those phone numbers, and there's always more than one phone number, uh, that phone number is going to pop up, and you're going to be able to talk about a Marine and possibly even, you know, either just ask them or they'll more than happy to come to your schools and talk to you or talk to you, talk to your students. Uh, if you're more interested in just over encompassing, just hearing about the Marine Corps or getting like um, that, that actual personal experience, like the educator workshop that I briefly talked about, if you're looking for more of that, you could always uh, go to connect.marines.com and there's just a short little, you know, like first name, last name, you know, like a little application there. Um, and then kind of like what, what your interests are. Um, and there's not just educators workshop, but we also do like a coaches workshop, or I don't know if we have any music teachers on here. We even have a music teacher workshop because we do have uh, musicians in the Marine Corps. Um, but it, all of those workshops are available to you guys. Um, and if you do fill out the information on connect.marines.com, you will have a Marine reaching out to you very shortly after you fill that out. Great. Well, thank you everyone for attending today. And thank you for an amazing presentation and being so engaged with our attendees. Um, we really appreciate it. If you have any closing words, maybe some, your best sentence of advice, go ahead and give it and we will close it out for the night. <laughs> the best sentence of advice. Let's see. <laughs> um, life is good. It's, it's challenging. It's always going to be challenging. Uh, your students are going to be challenged every day. And I probably feel like a lot more than we were. Um, just remain positive and confident that you are teaching our future leaders of America. And that is absolutely incredible. Um, and I, without like a sentence of advice, I actually just want to leave you with a sentence of thanks. Um, thank you for everything that you guys do. Um, I can only imagine how challenging your role is as, you know, uh, as educators. And um, I, like I said, when I was in high school, like my educators were everything to me and they, they really guided me and protected me and made sure I succeeded in everything that I did. And I know you guys are doing the same. So I just, I'll just leave it with thank you to all of you. Thank you, everyone. Um, this recording will be available on the NSHSS website in two to three business days. So look out for that, um, especially if you want to get those resources. They will also be sent in an email um, in 24 hours. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.